We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today is a new candidate for mayor in Nashville. He's Metro Councilman at Large, John Cooper. Uh, Councilman Cooper, uh, you, you mentioned oh. that uh, um, we we sort of had our debt service go out the wazoo the last couple of years. That in part was because we refinanced and that debt got moved down the road. Usually to deal with the debt overall, you've either got to cut money from other parts of the budget or you've got to raise taxes. If you're mayor, do you do want both of those or which one? Well. Great question. You don't always know what the future is. Here in our period of biggest boom, though, we've run out of money, and it's a financial stewardship question. In time, we may have to have a tax increase, but before we get there, we owe it to the citizens of Nashville to scrub the budget just as tight as we can and to try to get some money from downtown tourism economy to pay for its own costs. You mentioned that downtown isn't paying enough of its fair share, but is it, aren't we taking money away from tourism monies right now to pay for the incentives and other things that Metro wants to do? And we're already borrowing against those Metro dollars that the Tourism Commission and the Convention Center Commission has, so we're already doing that. Downtown's already putting in more money. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't think that's right. Uh, how is downtown are putting they, in more not, money? Are, is, it, is the convention center not putting in money to help cover well, down the recent, road? Well, recently it has agreed, due to pressure from groups like me, has agreed for a, a one-time payment and a memorandum of understanding of $10 million. But the Music City Center runs a $50 million cash surplus and has for various years. Our taxes, fundamentally our taxes, which are being collected by tourism, the, the Visitor and Convention Bureau gets $27 million of tax money. So it has surpluses to begin to reimburse Metro for additional services that are going downtown. When Metro reset its property tax rate after the last reappraisal, did it not set it too low in the, with the idea that you want the lowest property tax rate ever in the history of Metro and we wound up not setting it where we could do what well, we needed to get done? Yes, in that... Um, uh, it was set at a point where people can argue that it should have been higher. But the reality is we don't have confidence that all the money is being well spent and we are spending too much subsidizing a downtown that probably needs to pay for itself at this point. You say density is not its own reward, but a lot of density comes because of private development. Are you saying that we need to put a moratorium on no. rezoning or new development? Do you put limits on the marketplace? Do you sort of limit what people can do to either sell, buy, or redevelop well, their own property? Well, development is now a legal right for most people, right? So you're not really putting a moratorium or changing that. It's just that it, you need to provide a plan for a livable city. You need beautiful streets. You need green space investments. You need to connect to all these wonderful features that we have in Nashville that in the next era will be brought online to make us an incredible city. Now, the birth of the modern city, I think, really comes from the preservation of the Ryman Auditorium. From that, we radiated a lot of great things. We have a lot of other features in Nashville that if we preserve them and use them and connect to them with green space and beautiful streets, really a great city provides a canvas for great development. But that's spending more money. Metro doesn't have that money. So what do you cut in order to do those things well, to, to well connect Metro all those things has $2.3 billion. Metro will have more money in the future. You can say we set the property tax incorrectly, but we still had increased property taxes even at the rate that we set it at. So you've got additional money, you have to spend it correctly. In the public-private partnerships, one of the things that the city has approved, I, although I think you voted against it, was to build this new MLS soccer stadium out at the fairgrounds. Uh, if you're mayor, will you continue to go forward with that project? Will you seek for that to be reconsidered? That, that's finished business. The MLS stadium, we need it to be a success. We need to make it a great success. Now, it's going to be, in the end, I predict, more expensive than we were told that it would be. And fundamentally, my issue with the MLS Soccer Stadium is that it's in the wrong place. It should have been downtown to accentuate the hospitality industry, to use parking that already existed, to use transportation that already existed, and not to give the fairgrounds as an incentive to have a team play at the MLS stadium. But, but this is finished business, well, now and now talk, we're going to make it a success. Well, now there's talk about redeveloping and bringing back NASCAR at the Speedway next door. Is there room for both of those, and 
The mayor says he's not going to spend any local dollars to do that. Right. Do you agree about that? And what's the future of NASCAR? Out well, there? it's one of my concerns about the plan that we did not give uh, appropriate recognition of that amazing speedway and that that's a jewel in our community too and that we're snuffing it out by overcrowding a site for the incentive development and not just the stadium. But if you, if you look out at Nashville and people and citizens, I do feel they should have been asked about that investment, the same way that with Nissan Stadium, that we asked, we had a referendum, we had a community decision about this. Now that we're up to four professional stadiums that actually c will cost the general fund money, you have to be very careful about this kind of elective development, but it's done and we're going to make it a success. Uh the budget time's coming up. One of the big issues, big controversies, or at least discussions, will be about the school budget. Mayor Briley says he'll be recommending a budget that's at least a record $1 billion, 70% of its local money. Uh, that particular budget, if he fully funds the school budget, which will be difficult, would include a 10% pay raise for all school employees. Would you support that, and how in the world would we Well, I haven't that? seen the budget, so I'm not sure quite how it's paid for. Of course, School funding is my, going to be my number one priority because teachers are the developers that we need to be supporting. Uh, the billion dollars also is a complicated figure. To, uh, that it has capital money in it. Capital money, it has debt service money. Everything has been brought together. So on an apples to apples basis, nobody really knows what the school operating budget proposal is going to be at this point. Well, how do you fund big pay raises for teachers, as mean as they may be, along with not giving a similar pay raise to metro workers. It looks like the 3% cost of living is going to go back in this year. Is that enough? And again, how do you even fund that? Well, the, we haven't seen the mayor's budget. Um, you may well have a property tax increase down the road. But, but in not, the the, not this year. I don't think it'll happen this year, right? It's an election um, year. Well, it is an election year, but also we haven't gone through the process of really trying to be reimbursed for expenses downtown. And there are also savings that have to be recognized by people. Now, I invented a Blue Ribbon Commission process, invented, I wrote it, the council adopted it. I think it's one of the tools going forward for managing the budget to make sure that, in fact, we do have the money and we don't overpromise. John Cooper is our guest. He's a, council, he's a councilman at large. He's also a candidate for mayor in the August 1st primary here in Nashville. Back to continue our conversation after you watch these messages.